Here I'll show you how to run macros on worksheets that are password protected in Microsoft Excel. And also I'll show you how to add some code related to that, including checking if the worksheet is password protected so you don't run any unnecessary code, and how to run a macro on a password protected worksheet where a user cannot themselves do anything with that worksheet. It may sound a little bit confusing, but you'll understand when we get there. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. First things first, let us build a simple macro. Alt F11 to go to the VBA window, insert module, and of course you can download this workbook so that you do not have to type everything out or anything. Let's do a very simple macro. And we're going to get some user input. And now we're going to put that user input somewhere. Go back to the worksheet. And if we go ahead and protect this guy, all of the passwords are just going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Easy peasy. So now try to run the macro. This part works, no problemo. Error, we cannot run the macro or basically just do something with the password protected worksheet. First, let us unprotect it. Okay, so this is actually a really, really easy thing to fix. We first go to the section of the code that deals with a worksheet. So this does not do anything with a protected worksheet, just shows you a little pop-up box. This works on the worksheet. So we must surround it with some code that unprotects and reprotects the worksheet. First reference the worksheet, we're going to use the active worksheet, the currently visible worksheet, and you just type unprotect. It is as easy as that. And at the end, let's go ahead and reprotect it. So active sheet dot unprotect and active sheet dot protect. Now, if you have a password, super simple, type the password in there just like that. And to reprotect it with the password, just like that. So now we go back to the worksheet, run the macro. All right, let's try one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Perfect. Now let's try and do something in the worksheet. Nope, because it is protected over here. Nope. So the macro ran on the worksheet, did whatever we needed it to do, and then protected it afterwards. It's really as simple as that. So if that's all you want, you really don't need to watch any more. But next up, I'm going to show you how to do lots of cool stuff to make this a lot more robust. The first thing I want to mention is when you run this macro, even if your worksheet is currently unprotected, this will work just fine. But this line of code right here is going to leave your worksheet protected afterwards. So if you're testing your macro, if you're building your macro, testing the worksheet going back and forth, and you want to keep running it, after every time you run it, you will have to unprotect the worksheet unless you comment this line of code out. So you can just put a single quote like that. It'll turn green. And now this will not run. So that's a good little tip for building a macro that has to do this. That way your worksheet's unprotected the whole time. It makes life easier. So just take note of that. Now, one way to get around that, and it's actually pretty darn cool, is you can test if the worksheet is currently protected or not. So let's do a little test up here. And let's say check if worksheet is protected. And I will be adding more comments as we move along. So it's really, really easy. We're going to do a simple if statement. We're going to reference the worksheet, which is the currently visible worksheet, the active sheet. So we type active sheet. And then protect contents equals true, then and if. So if we get to here, this block of code, then worksheet is protected. And what we're going to do here, just to make life easy, is show you a little message box that says the 
worksheet is protected. Okay, so this will be just a little visual cue to tell you that it has been protected. But what you could do is you could have an else in here. So we could do something like this. Worksheet is not protected. So maybe I'll do this message box. The worksheet is not protected. And you could use this little check to figure out if you even needed to run the unprotect code or if you want to run the protect code. So you don't have to put this just here at the top of the macro. Put it wherever you need to perform the check in order to figure out what code you want to run. And that's how it can minimize the amount of code that you need to run because your macro is going to be a lot bigger than just three lines probably. Now let's talk about another common problem that you may run into, and that's what happens if an error occurs. All right, let's indent this a little bit just so we can see all the code that's going to be running within the unprotect and protect section. And let's create something that can cause us to have an error. I'll show you two simple ways that this could happen. One is we're asking for a number. So let's say that we want to divide one by that number. Well, I'm sure you can imagine how this could cause an error. So let's go ahead and test it out. Alt F11, Alt F8, run the macro. Now let's input zero. The worksheet is protected. So we can see that that code runs. Nice, good. Now once I hit OK, the rest of the macro will run. Division by zero, error. Okay, so now the user, because they put in a zero, is looking at your macro, okay? They can hit, hit end or debug. They go back here, and guess what happened? The worksheet is left unprotected. They can do whatever they want with it right now. So let's fix this problem. And before I do that, I'll show you one other way that can really easily cause an error. So if I run the macro, and if you do not catch the user closing it with the X or cancel, you can also get an error. Now I'm not gonna cover catching the cancel button in this tutorial because that's specific to the input box, but let's go and figure out how to make it so that when an error occurs, it doesn't leave your worksheet exposed like that. First, I'm gonna show you a really easy, but uh, let's say dirty way to do it. On error, resume next. What this line of code means is if there's an error, don't stop, just keep going on with the macro. And uh, as you can imagine, that causes some problems. So let's call it, let's just write simple, but dirty way to ensure the worksheet remains locked after an error. All right, so let us test it out. Let's put a zero, okay. The worksheet is not protected. We have a zero in here and worksheet is now protected. So you may say, well, how'd the zero get in there? Well, the zero got in there because the line that caused the error was this line, which had absolutely nothing to do with putting our user input into range A1. But as you can now see, we didn't know there was an error with the macro. So you should, if you use this, you shouldn't really use this, but if you use this, only use this after you ensure your macro works. And I'm gonna put it hides errors. Okay, so now let's move on to the feature that's going to allow us to not have to use this. I wanna show you this because you'll see it a lot and it's a very easy, simple, quick, dirty way to fix something, but you really, let's comment it out so it's not running. What we should be using is this really cool feature that will replace this unprotect and protect stuff. So, active sheet dot 
protect password colon equals our password, then comma user interface only equals true. Now let's comment this out and comment this out. So we have replaced those two lines and on error resume next, so I guess three lines, with this right here. This is what will allow you to password protect the worksheet so that the user cannot change anything, but the macro can. And really quickly, I'm going to go ahead and make these a little bit easier to read. So let's test it out now. Go back here. Go to our macro, run it. Let's input a bunch of zeros, three zeros. Hit OK. So currently our worksheet is protected. Uh-oh, we got an error. We can hit end or debug, doesn't matter. But now when we go back here, still protected. So our worksheet is so safe and nice and happy. And you may say, yes, but I don't want the user to see this with a little error guy that pops up. So I want to use on error resume next. OK, if you really want to, go for it. Is it a bad idea? Yeah. What should you be doing? You should be catching the errors before. So you should check for an error before you do this. You should check for a zero, I mean, before you do this line of code. And up here, you should check if the user has hit the cancel button or not. This line of code here, it does not prevent errors from occurring. What it does is it makes it so the worksheet will still remain protected when that error happens. So it's just an added layer of protection. And if we go back to the worksheet now, run it, let's go one, two, three, the worksheet is protected, 123 has been input, and there we go, worksheet still protected. So it works. Now the very last thing is we have our passwords just like this out in the open. All the user has to do is come here and he can change them. If you want to hide them, go to your VBA project, right click, VBA project properties, Go to the Protection tab, Lock Project for Viewing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Of course, use a real password for yours. And when the user opens the workbook, it'll be like this. And they will not be able to open it to view it unless they enter the correct password. And I think that is pretty much all there is to this. That's how you password protect, password unprotect, do stuff with the worksheet, set it back to normal or however it was. It's protected status. Here's how you check if it's protected or not. Make sure it, uh, the user cannot do anything with it. So I'm going to go ahead and add some comments now. Allow macros to edit the worksheet, but not the user. User can, however, they can still remove the worksheet protection by hand if they have the password. So this doesn't stop the user from being able to work with their workbook, just makes it so that life's a little bit easier for the macro. Let's see what else do I need to comment. This one is just get user input. And type zero to throw an error for testing only. And here we have a very simple input the data into a cell. And this works on the currently visible worksheet. So here is how you unprotect a worksheet. And here is how you protect a worksheet. And if you'd like to learn more about protect and unprotect and 
all of these options, which are really cool, in the uh, go to your search engine, DuckDuckGo or whatever you use, and just type Excel VBA MSDN Protect. Something along those lines, make sure you have Excel, VBA, and MSD in there. You'll get Microsoft's website, which will very clearly explain all the options that you can attach to dot protect. And I believe that is it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.